Coffee is the greatest storytelling medium. It is the thing that we meet over to get to know each other when we really want to get to know each other. I love New York City. The New York City is the city of the make many people. Let's catch up over coffee, and that's the thing that we tell our stories over. And then coffee itself has such a beautiful story that I find that people get really drawn into that. Not only just as a product and as a beverage, but the place that it has in our lives. Everybody drinks coffee, and everybody drinks it differently. You have it at a very vulnerable part of the day. It can really frame how at least the morning will unfold, if not the entire day. So if you can turn that moment into something that's very aesthetic and very beautiful and very pleasing and that makes you happy, how can you not? How can you not do that every morning? I have a complicated relationship with coffee. I'm not an aficionado, but I can't drink deli coffee. Oh, I ask my customer, do you want a coffee? If they say yes, I put it right away with sugar. If I want to make more tasty coffee, the customer come back and put me sugar. Deli coffee, diplomatically, I would say that people should drink coffee however they like to, but for me personally, I just couldn't do it. It makes me so existentially sad. I don't need to know where the coffee comes from. I don't need to know, like, all the aromatic notes of the coffee, but I definitely appreciate it. If it means that I don't have to drink a deli coffee, then I'm very grateful. Cupping is about 100 years old now. At first it was just as a way to differentiate bad coffees from good coffee. In the last 20 or 30 years, a point system has been assigned to coffee. Anything that's uh, over 80 points is considered to be a specialty coffee. We really look for coffees that are 84 and 85 points. Like anything else that you drink, you you have flavor receptors all over your mouth, so you just want to like just want to get it everywhere. So that's why we slurp coffee. We're just trying to get some get some more air in there. A normal day for a neighborhood shop in New York is busier than the busiest day for the busiest shop in many cities around the world. And in the last 10 years, we've gone from maybe two or three well-known specialty shops to maybe 75 to 100. People want to know the person making the thing that they're you know, eating or drinking, and coffee is a neighborhood thing. Bringing together people into a community space has always been really important to me. We're your daytime bartenders. You know, we know your child's name, we know where you work. And if you work really hard to make everybody feel accepted, to make everybody feel comfortable, it's a much better business model than only wanting to serve people who have tattoos and are between the ages of 25 and 30 and live in Williamsburg. The method you should go with is, is the method that you're liking at that moment. I'll make an AeroPress for two or three weeks and that's what I'm doing every morning and one morning I'm just not doing it, it's not clicking. It's like when you have a pair of jeans that you're really liking, you end up wearing the same pants over and over again because you like how they feel, you like how they fit. And that's what I find with coffee. For me coffee is something where, um, I don't know, I kind of want it, like, I kind of want it fast. And then for me, I can just get to work and that part of my day is sort of, sort of done. You just want something in your hand that tastes great. At the end of the day, it's just a cup of coffee.